affair that we are all about. But keep in mind that, uh, well, let me before I say that, there's a reference to everybody to, to the service, our visitors, guests, our, our faithful Zoom visitors. Revenue, and we pray that that you may enjoy the service. Something will be said to edify you, and mostly God. We hear that as the time that is that our voice, keeping God in mind, sing, sing this verse as it be led in silence. A first selection of page number 881. Page number 881. Oh, I have a I'm satisfied with the God of the Lord. What is your sin? And then let it all go, but if that's it, when the rest will shine, I won't let go for that's the right.
next section is going to be 452. The page number 452, Appalachian Rabbi, Fishery and Prayer. That's page number 452. Stand in the promises of Christ, I Good morning, church. Let us go down in prayer. Eternal Father in heaven, we come before that throne of grace, thanking you for your love, grace, and mercy, and your many uncountable blessings. We pray that you will be with us this morning and bless us both individually and collectively as we lift up our praises unto your holy and righteous name. Heavenly Father, we pray that the things that will be said and done throughout this morning's service will be according to your word, and will be pleasing and acceptable unto you. Father, we pray for those who have traveled here this morning, that you will steer them clear from all hurt, harm, and danger, and arrive them here safely. We pray for those who are in poor health this morning, 
that you will just wrap your healing arms around us. Father, we pray for the sadness and the bereaved. May you comfort them and strengthen them as they can be grieved over the loss of their loved ones. Father, we offer up to you a special prayer for Brother and Sister Eldridge, who lost their nephew this past week, and for Sister Barbara's dear friend, who recently lost her husband. Father, may you keep us all in thy tender mercies and forgive us of our sins and transgressions against thee, thought, word, or deed. Heavenly Father, we pray that you will guide and bless our minister, Brother Elders, as he comes forth shortly to declare upon us your word of truth. May your word uplift our spirits so that we may be productive Christians in your kingdom. May you be with us, Heavenly Father, as we proceed further into our worship service this morning. May you continue to bless the Wolf Days Church of Christ and all the churches of Christ as we strive to be that city on the hill that with that great light that shines on a dark, sinful world, that people might say we are the true children of God. We pray that you will be pleased by our worship and that you will be exalted and magnified and that we will, we will be strengthened and edified for having been here today. This, our, this is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. And there's a cold dawn breaking of the restless waves and the love, send the love. There are souls to rest, there are souls to set, send the love. Two at the 
thank you for you, thank you for that spirit of love and pray that you know, worship you at that way. Be a source of encouragement to you. And most of all, that you might glorify God. That we would leave here having done what's pleasing in the sight of God. You might be here edified. You will, you will be asked the song of David that said, I was glad when they said unto me, Oh, yeah, let us go into the house of the Lord. Thank you again that you're here. I want you to sing it to this point, 412. So let me call Jesus, hold my hand. Go with me, be with me, stand by me. Oh, okay. Yeah. As I travel through this trail, and there's a bridge for all standing. Is it this that the truth is seeking? Is it the truth?
Exodus chapter 14. Verse 13. Exodus 14. Verses 13 and 14. And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show to you today. For the Egyptians who ye have seen today, ye shall see them again no more forever. The Lord shall fight for you, ye shall hold your peace. I want to conclude this morning the lesson. I began last week. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Israel had gone into Egypt, and Joseph was, was there in Egypt and brought his family in. They began to go multiply. And there was a pharaoh that came up that knew not go. They began to see those spread their, 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 their population. They began to increase. The God had told Moses, I will multiply your seed as the sands of the seashore. Pharaoh got counsel that they didn't want Israel to team up with their enemies and fight against them. So they began to put fast knives in those days, hard labor up there, and basically keep them down. And the Bible says that the children of Israel cried unto the Lord by reason of the taskmasters. And the Lord heard their cry. God sent Moses to deliver them out of Egypt. Moses went into Pharaoh and told Pharaoh, God said, Let my people go, that they might serve me instead of you. And Pharaoh said, Who is God that I should obey? He got a lot of Pharaohs in our land today. God, God showed Pharaoh who he was. And he fled their, their country. All the way to, to killing the firstborn in every household, except those that had the blood of the doorposts. Pharaoh himself commanded Israel to get out of Egypt. God through Moses led Israel out of Egypt some 600,000 people. And then they come to the Red Sea. Actually, before they get to the Red Sea, Pharaoh changed his mind and said, I know you let them go, but I, we need to go, we, we need to go and destroy. So they went after Israel. Israel see the Egyptians coming behind them. And they get to the Red Sea and now they can't go forward and they can't go back. The only place they can go is up. All they can do is look up and cry out for the Lord. And they began to talk with Moses and began to tell Moses, did we not frankly tell you when we were in Egypt to leave us there or not? Was there not enough grave in Egypt that you brought us out here in full of this to And they're saying that it is Moses that said, stand still. What Moses is really telling them is, Stop complaining, stop talking, stop, stop 
focusing on the wrong thing. Say, stand still and see. And as I mentioned last week, it's still part of that stand still, but sometimes you got to stop what you're doing so that you might be able to see what God is doing. And sometimes we'll miss what God is doing because we're too busy seeing what we're doing. And so Moses tells them to stand still. And to stand still is not just don't do anything, but just stop doing what you do. Right. You'll see the salvation of the Lord. And so God wanted to, to deliver Israel. And all they needed to do is trust them. And I remind you that we have got people today that God will provide deliverance to us. All I need us to do is trust them. And so we ended last week, stand still, and then and see so you don't miss what God is doing. And I think this last scripture in Psalm chapter 34 and verse number 17. In Psalm 34, 17 is where we ended. And so is where I'd like to begin with this understanding. It says Psalm 34, verse 17, the righteous cry. And the Lord heard it and delivered them out of all their trouble. The righteous cry, and the Lord heard it, and he delivered them out of all their troubles. Doesn't matter what you're going through, doesn't matter how much you're going through. God will take care of you. Oh, we just got to trust him. And so here it is, Israel. They cry unto the Lord. It is a reminder for us that in our moments of distress, it is in our moment of affliction, it is in our moment of tribulation that we ought to cry to the Lord. It is Jonah, in Jonah chapter 2, in verse number 2, Jonah. It is Jonah who fled the command of the Lord. Got on the boat instead of going to Nineveh, what God told him to do. And then the sea began to rage, and the people took Jonah and cast him overboard, and the sea ceased. But the Lord prepared a fish, prepared a well to not follow, to follow Jonah. And in Jonah chapter 2, verse number 2, it says, Jonah says, and I cried to the Lord. And so I'm just reminding you that sometimes affliction comes. Anybody ever forgot to pray? It's just me. Verse 2 of Jonah 2, the Bible says what? And said. And Jonah said. I cried by reason of my affliction. Of Jonah God. said, just like Israel, because of the taskmasters, they cried unto the Lord. Sometimes we forget about the Lord and we go into circumstances that causes us to call on the Lord. Sometimes life and situation is a, is a reminder of, of us or a reminder to us that we need the Lord. We're, because if you're not careful, you'll think, or you begin to think, or we begin to think that we only need the Lord, you know, in those real bad situations. But we can't make it through life without the Lord. It's a day to day thing. And sometimes those afflictions come to remind us that we need the Lord and we need to be called in the road here. And so Jonah said, I cried to the Lord. What he said? Right by reason of my affliction. By reason of my affliction. My afflictions caused me to call on the Lord. Israel cried unto the Lord. 
by reason of the taskmaster, by because of what they were going through. It's okay to call to the Lord when you're going through stuff. But it's a reminder that we ought to not wait till just then. Well, read what he said. And he heard me. And he heard me. Look where he was, y'all. It doesn't matter how tough the situation, it doesn't matter how bad it is. He says, and he heard me. What he said? He was in the, so so what Jonah is saying is that really in this way well, I am in the grave and he cried unto the Lord. You couldn't get any lower than he was. In your lowest moment, you cry unto the Lord. From the belly of the well, from the grave of hell, he called unto the Lord. But he says. Thou heardest my voice. And thou heardest my voice. Let me say, it's just a reminder, y'all, that we serve a mighty good God, amen. amen. And God heareth us. He heard Israel. And, 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 and here's what David said. And the Lord deliver us. The Lord delivered me from all the righteous cries of war. And he deliver us out of all of our afflictions. See, there is nothing that we go through that God can't help us with. Oh, I know we know that, amen? But here's what you need to understand. There is nothing that we go through that God won't help us with. Oh, we know God can help us. But if we're not careful, we'll, we'll, we'll begin to think that the Lord is not helping me. The Lord is not on my side. And so God helped Israel that day. And I just want you to know that the Lord will help us. Yes, will. Go with me to first Timothy, uh, or rather to Second Peter chapter 2. See, the Lord helped Israel that day. He delivered them. What did God do? God told them to call Moses, tell them to stand still. He said, I want you to hold up the rod. And I'm going to blow open the Red Sea. Oh, you got to hear this, y'all. That God, that, that, that Israel couldn't go back because the Egyptian is bearing down on them. They couldn't go back. And they couldn't go forward because the sea is in front of them. And it is God who made a way out of no way. It is God. Listen, it is God that provided deliverance for Israel that day. He blew open the Red Sea and Israel was able to cross over on dry ground. Oh, uh, don't, don't forget the dry ground, y'all, because the dry ground mattered. They were able to go in you. Y'all, you see, I grew up in I grew up in country. And 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 one of the things I, we had bibles all over in Louisiana. We were always, as kids, we were always in the Bible. For some reason, we were always in the Bible. And sometimes we would have boots on. And you get down just in the bike, walking in the mud, and your feet get so embedded in the mud that you can't pull your foot out of the mud. I've been in, I've been in mud, walking in water in the in the in the bayou. Foot gets stuck, and you water your foot and yank it up, and it leaves the boot down to pick your foot up. Israel crossing the Red Sea on dry ground is an amazing kind of accomplishment. So you understand it's just not God who opened the Red Sea, but God provided a passage for them. It is God who made a way when there was no way. God can make a way. Yes, yes, yes. Out of no way. Can provide for it, 
In 2 Peter chapter 2, verse number 9, what the Bible says, it says, Y'all know the song, right? The Lord will make a way somehow. I know some folks just saying, but that's real when it comes to God. That God can provide deliverance even when it seems like there is no way out. Seems like there is no deliverance and God can make a way. Second Peter chapter 2, verse number 9, the Bible says what? Well, the Lord know how to deliver. The Lord know how to deliver. Out of temptation. The what? God know how to temptation. God know how to deliver the God know how to temptation. And what he does? And to reserve the unjust. And he reserved the unjust. What? Until the day of judgment. Until the day of judgment. I'll just tell you this, you know, it is God who will provide for you. And it's the same God that will take care of your enemy. He said, the Lord, you got to read that again, this, because I don't want you to miss this. He said, the Lord what now? The Lord knows how. He does what now? The Lord knows how. The Lord knows how. Because here's what he's telling you, is God know how to deliver you, even when it seems to you that there is no way out. And we're sitting there trying to figure out, and we have no way out of the situation, and here it is, God know how to deliver us. He knows what situation we in better than us. Oh man, you just gotta trust him. The Lord knows how to deliver you out of the hand of your enemy. Because what God is doing with Israel is he's delivered them from the Egyptians who oppressed them. And no matter who it is that afflicts you, that caused you pain, that caused you tribulation, don't worry about them because God got them. He says God knows how to, how to deliver the right of the God that out of temptation. And what's interesting in that same verse with the last part of that says what and does what business? And to reserve. And he's reserving it, what? The unjust. The unjust to what? To the day of judgment. Until the day of judgment. To be punished. To be God's got him. But you know we won't like God. Get him right now, Lord. Lord, get him right now, Lord. <laughs> That's what we want. But see, God knows what he's doing. You know, I can get him right now. Anybody ever been inflicted by somebody? Yes. Anybody ever had somebody cause them some grief? God's got them. We just need to let the Lord do it. We just need to let the Lord do it. He know how to work. You hear what he said? The Lord know it how. First Corinthians chapter. 10, verse 13. You know the scripture, but here, I want you to hear it. This idea that the Lord know it. That's what, see, I love that because sometimes you get in a situation, you don't see no way out. You don't know how to handle it. You don't know how to do it. So what God is saying is stand still. Stop trying to do it. I got it. God said, you just see, I want, what I want you to do is watch what I will do. Stop trying to do it. I got it. Lord know how. He says, but yeah, this is verse 13. What it says, first Corinthians 10. There is no temptation. He said, there is nothing that we go through. What? Taking you, but such. Nothing has taken you that such. As common to man. Keep reading. God is faithful. God is faithful. God is faithful, y'all. We serve a God that's faithful to us. And I wish we were as faithful to God as God is to us. God is faithful. What he said, who will not suffer you 
We will not succeed. To be tempted above. To be tempted above. That you are able. That you are able. And then he says this. What? But will. But he will. With the temptation. God will. With the temptation. But. Also make a way. He will him. make a way. Out of no way. You see that he will make a way what? To escape. To escape. That you may be able to so bear. You may be able to bear. It is God to buy a way for us. But I want you to understand, just like Israel, that God will provide a way for us also. God will provide. God will, God said, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. And the salvation there is deliverance. See the deliverance of God. And God will deliver his people in those situations, God, and God will deliver us. We just got to trust him. Amen. Watch this, y'all. This is God. God will deliver. But what's interesting about that, yeah? Go back with me to Exodus 14. In Exodus 14, he said, and then, Here's what he said, and, 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 and I don't have to spend time on it, but what I want you to see is, what he says is, he says, see the salvation of the Lord. Yeah, hear that? He said, see the salvation of the Lord. What he says after that is, which he will show you. Which he will show you. What? Today. Today. God is going to show you what he will do. And I, I, I can't say this enough, that sometimes we don't see what God is doing because we're too busy doing stuff. Sometimes we don't see what God is doing because we spend too much time not doing ourselves. Verse number 14, I want you to hear this. I want, I want you to leave here with this as well. I don't want you to miss it. Verse 14, he says what? Well, the Lord shall fight for you. Say, God, I'm going to fight for you. See, I think we miss that as Christians. I think we miss that. God told Israel, he said, the Lord will fight for you. The Lord will fight for you. And then he says what? And ye shall hold your peace. And ye shall hold your peace. Now, when you go back to chapter 13, when you go back to chapter 13, God led Israel out of Egypt by Moses. And when, when Israel went out of Egypt, what God did is, God, they, listen, they've been in Egypt all their life. Where are they going? Where does God really want them to go? Well, the Lord led them. It says God led them by a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night so that they might travel both day and night. That's chapter 13, 20, uh, 2, 21, 22, to the end, the end of that chapter. But here's the deal, that God is providing for them. He is leading them. Now, Israel look back and they see the Egyptians following them. And God told Moses, tell them to stand still. See the salvation of the Lord. I will fight for them. Now, Vincent, go with me. Verse number, verse number 19 of chapter 14. Now, God told Israel, he said, stand still, see the salvation of the Lord. And, and, and verse, verse 15, the Lord asked Moses, wherefore by the reason did you cry unto me? Yeah, that's the question that God asks in verse 15. Why are you crying unto me? Do you think I'll help you? Y'all see that in your mind? Yeah. You ever cry to God and then you don't believe God gonna help you? Oh, I know you don't say God. That wasn't me. But sometimes, y'all, that's what we do. We cry to the Lord and then we get up and we go fight our own battle. And God's telling Israel. You don't have to fight. Verse number 19. What is it? And the angel of God. And the angel of God. 
which went before the camp of Israel. It went before the camp of Israel. It led him as a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. What it said it did. Removed and, and went behind them. It went from the front of them to the back of them. Go ahead and read. And the pillar of cloud, pillar of cloud went from before their face. Went from before their face. And stood behind them. And it stood behind them. And what? And it came between the camp of the Egyptians. And it came between them and the Egyptians. Y'all want you to see God fighting for them, God. God said, I'll fight for you. You don't have to do it. I got it. I'll fight for you. So he went behind them, took the cloud from in front of them, put it behind them, and it came between them and the Egyptians. And what it said? And the camp of Israel. Between them and the camp of Israel. And it was a cloud and darkness to them. It was a cloud and it was darkness to the Egyptians. But it says what? But it gave light by night to thee. But it gave light to Israel. So that what it said? So that the one came not near. So you don't have to worry about them anymore. You ain't got to worry about looking back and seeing them. Not only did God provide the deliverance for them, so God was fighting for them, and they didn't even have to look back and see their enemy no more. See, the difference here is when you let God do it. Because you don't know how God's going to fight those battles. But the Lord, here's what it says, 2 Peter 2 and 9, the Lord know how to deliver. We just need to let him do it. Jesus, brother. It became so God stood between them. God stood between them, and they and, and the Egyptians, even if they wanted to, they could not because the cloud became darkness and they could not see. And so they could not attack Israel because God was fighting for them. And then this happened. And verse, and then the next verse. God told Moses to hold up the rod and he blew the Red Sea open all night. Verse number 21, I think it is. This is what it says. And Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. Now, verse 22, let's see. And the children of Israel. And the children of Israel. Went into the midst of the sea. They went into the midst of the sea. Upon dry ground. Upon dry ground. Go ahead, read. And the waters were in wall. The waters were wall. And to them on the to right, them hand. right hand. And the... What a marvelous deliverance of God. That's a whole other sermon there, y'all, but I ain't dealing with that this morning. Keep reading what he said. And the Egyptians pursued. And now, can I tell you that this is real? You got to hear this, y'all. Israel cried to the Lord by reason of the taskmasters. God sent Moses. Moses delivered them from that bondage. Then the Egyptians start pursuing them and they cry to the Lord again. Just because God delivered us from something, it doesn't mean it ain't nothing else going to happen, y'all. See, life keeps happening. And, and what God is doing is he's delivering them out of one thing. And once he delivers them from that, then something else happens. And now they cry to God again. And God provides deliverance again. They worry about the Egyptians and God make it so they can't even come to them. And then God blow open the Red Sea and Israel go down into the sea and dry ground. But what happened? The Egyptians say, hey, we going in too. Was interesting. They pursuing this when they can't see him. Don't think because you win a battle with your enemy, they don't give up. Sometimes you just got listen. You just let God fight those battles. Even if you win today, keep keep your guard up. <coughs> The enemy will continue and continue 
They ain't gonna change it. Keep reading what he says, Mister. And went in after them. They went in after them. In the midst of the sea. In the midst of the sea. When all Pharaoh's horses. All the Pharaoh's horses. Everybody going in. Keep reading. And it came to pass. And it came to pass. That in the morning watch. In the morning watch. The Lord looked into the host of the Egyptians. The Lord looked at the host of the Egyptians. Through the pillar of fire. Through that pillar of fire. And of the cloud. Go ahead, read it. And trouble the host of the Egyptians. And God, you see that word trouble there? It says, and the Lord confused them. And the Lord troubled them. Now watch what he did. Come and read it, y'all. Listen, God told Moses, tell Israel, I will fight for them. And when I'm telling you, when God fight for you, he know how to do it. If we know, if we don't always know what to do. And God troubled the Egyptians when they went in the sea. What it said it did? And took off the chariot's wheels. And took off the wheels. Read. That they drove them heavily. And listen, it said he drove, they were getting stuck in the mud on dry ground. It is God fighting for them. It said it drove them heavily. They on dry ground, they chariot, their wheels should get stuck. But they were heavy because God is fighting for them. Now watch that enemy, what it said. So that the Egyptians said. And so the Egyptians begin to see. Stand still and see. Now the Egyptians begin to see. What it said. Let us flee from the face of Israel. Let us flee from the face of Israel. For the Lord fighting for them. Because God is fighting for them. Y'all listen. Even your enemy will recognize. Because sometimes we, we listen. We try to fight the battle and what God really wants us to do is stand still, hold our peace, and let him fight for us. Go with me to, go with me to Ephesians chapter 6. Y'all listen, y'all listen. The Bible teaches us as Christians that we ought to put on the whole arm of God. Ephesians 6 verse number 10 says, Find my brother. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Verse 11 says, put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand. What God wants us to do is stand. The biggest thing we do is not fight. It is take a stand for God. But we let God handle our battles. Verse number 12 what he says, Mister. For we will not against flesh and blood. He says, hey, you put on the whole arm of God. He says, for we what? We will not against flesh and blood. You know, I, I, if I can tell you, if, if, listen, can you hear this every day? And we ain't fighting people, y'all. Oh, that gets so lost when you're dealing with people all the time. That we actually think we fight people. But we wrestle not, he said, what? We wrestle not against flesh and blood. It ain't about the people. It ain't about the person. And if you're not careful, you'll make all your battles about the people who are afflicting you. But it ain't them. It's your enemy who uses them. Oh, you me, but we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against what? Against principality. Principality. Against power. Against power. Against the rules of the darkness. Against the rules of the darkness. Of this world. Of this world. Against spiritual wickedness. Spiritual wickedness. And high places. High places. If we're in a battle with, against people, we can fight those battles easy. It's like the people coming to take Jesus and Peter pull out his sword and cut the man here off. I think he was aiming for his head and he missed it in the ear. And the Lord said, put your sword up. Y'all, can, can I tell you, you need to put your sword up? Because we ain't fighting flesh and blood. And we get confused because we think we fight both. 
But if we are fighting spiritual battles, if we are fighting spiritual battles, who better know how to fight that than the Lord? Who knows better than God? Because we don't know. The Lord knows how. I don't know how. And if we learn that lesson that we are not fighting people, that we are not fighting whoever, whatever, is spiritual. Sometimes you just need to let God fight. Here's what he says going forward. He says, put it on there for the whole armor of God. Here's what he lists. I mean, you notice this. Verse 14 going forward, he says, Gird your loins about with truth. Put on the breastplate of righteousness. Have your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. And take with you the shield of the faith that you might quench all the fiery boxes of the wicked one. And then I want to put on your head a cell, a helmet of salvation. Everything he named is to protect you. You go into battle every day. It's real, y'all. Every day we go out in the world, we are fighting a battle. But almost everything God gives us is to protect us. And he only gives us one weapon. He says, the helmet of salvation and take the sword of the spirit that you may be able to. No. And take the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Right. You want to fight somebody? Your fight has to do with saying what God said. That's how we fight. Look what God told Moses. Tell Israel. I will fight for them, and here's what I want them to do. I want them to shut up. Because usually when we're in the fight, we're saying the wrong thing. We're talking the wrong thing. Think about this. If you think you're fighting somebody particular, what in the world could you tell them that don't make them feel good? Oh, you don't hear me, y'all. I have to tell you that again. If you think it's the price of what could you tell them that's going to make a difference? Absolutely nothing. Unless you give them God's word. Yes, it is. And we, when we fight, y'all know when we fight, when we fight, you want to fight? You want to fight? When we fight, we ain't using the word of God. Y'all, y'all, come on, y'all, y'all know that. When folks say, well, you know, don't make me put my religion down. Oh, y'all ain't never heard that, right? <laughs> See, because what we do is we actually think, we actually think we got the fight. We, that's what we do. <laughs> Don't make me, what was it? Don't make me bring up that old me. So I'm the only one done that, right? It's, just, uh, <laughs> it's because we're thinking we have to fight. See, the only battle we have to fight if we use the word of God. Let God fight your battles for you. You stand firm on his word. You keep telling for what God said. That's what God wants. Other than saying what God said, God wants you to stop talking. I'll fight for you. I'll take care of you. I'll provide deliverance. All right, let me wrap this up, y'all. Go back for a minute. I want you to see, because you got to see it. If you do that, y'all, it's so different than how we do it as people. If you do it, here's the results of it. It's back in chapter 14. God's telling Moses in verse 15, he said, you wherefore you cry to me. He says, I'm going to provide deliverance. Verse number 16, here's what God says. He says, but I'm going to provide deliverance for Israel. But he says this in 16. He says what? But lift thou up thy rod. He said, lift thou thy rod. I'm saying 16. It's 17. 
And I behold. And I behold. I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians. I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians. And they shall fall. Y'all listen, you dealing with some people sometimes, y'all, they just got the hard hearts. And when you dealing with people with the hard hearts, there ain't nothing you can do but show them God. And the only way to show them God, see, if God is standing here, you need to get out the way so we can see him. You got to show them God. Stop fighting your own battle. Stop fighting like a human. Fight like a Christian. That's what God wants us to do. God said, I'm going to harden the Egyptian heart. What's going to happen? They shall follow them. And they're going to follow you. And I will get my heart up on faith. I will get the heart of Pharaoh. I'm going to show Pharaoh who I am. Go ahead and read. And upon all his hosts. And upon all his hosts. Upon his chariots. Upon his chariots. And upon his horses. And upon his horses. And the Egyptians shall know. And hear what he said. He don't miss this. And your enemy will know. Your enemy will know what he's going to know. That I am the Lord. That I am the Lord. He that your enemy will see God and not you. But when you are fighting, all they can see is you. But when you get out of the way and let God fight, they will give God the word. Go ahead and read what it says. When I have gotten me armor. And I will get armor. From Pharaoh. From his chariot. From his chariot. From his horses. From his horses. God's going to get the glory. See, if the battle is won and you fight it, God gets no glory. Teach. If the battle is won and you're the one fighting, God gets no glory. But if you stand on God's word, use the protection that God has gave us. Yeah, you, you can be protected from anything anybody throw at you. You got the shield of faith. It's all the fiery blood of the sea. If they shoot at your hand, you got the helmet of salvation on all you know the enemy. You just stay true to God. God give us what we need. We just have to, we just have to let God fight for us. Because he's no how. Y'all listen, I just want to encourage you this morning. God will provide deliverance. Yes, he will. We just need to sometimes just stand still, stop doing what we do, and watch. And see if God don't provide deliverance. And when God does, he'll begin to fight for us. Maybe God has never fought for you. Because you're too busy fighting. God will fight for you. When God fight for you. He will get the glory. And his enemies, your enemy, will praise the Lord. Y'all, I, I don't know, we don't have to go there, but in, in Matthew chapter 14, you know, this is amazing. I, I'm always thinking about what lesson, what is God really trying to teach us? When Jesus went before Pilate, and all the people made all the accusations against God, against Jesus. He never opened them up. And Father said, but you're not going to answer this child? And he said, he never answered a word in him. And I'm like, what in the world is God teaching us through that? Your words. Don't no matter unless you speak the truth. Well, we can learn that lesson, y'all. Listen, I just want to encourage you this morning. Stay true to God. Let God fight those battles for us. God will make a way out of no way. We just need to be, we just need to trust Him and stop trying to do it ourselves. And I say I'm talking to all of us. 
God is able, though. You just need to trust him. This morning, if you're here and you're not a Christian, you ought to be one. If you're here that Jesus came to heaven and suffered down the cross for the sins. Hear that? Believe that. Be willing to repent of your sins. And then he said, he said, when you repent, you shall all likewise perish. So God really wants is for us to repent and change. And then stand before man and say, yes, I believe that Jesus is the Son of God. And then be buried in baptism with him for the remission of his sins. All of his sins will be washed away. You become a new creature in Christ, live faith unto death, and you'll receive the promise. You're a Christian, but you haven't been all that God would have you to be. I want to encourage you. Repent, confess. We'll pray with you for you. God will forgive you, and all of us together keep working out our soul salvation. So if you're standing in, you have to make it honest, you have to stand, and today we'll see. What can wash away my sin? Thank you for being our God. Thank you, Father, for loving us enough to send your son to die for us. Yes. Help us, Father, in every day of our life, we might appreciate all that you've done for us. Yes. Father, we ask this morning your continued blessing upon us individually as we stand in here for individual need. Father, we pray that the blessing of the gifts, mother in law. Father, we pray that you will be a blessing. In that situation, we know that you can be a blessing for good. We ask your blessing, pray that you be with us, God. Bless us in every area that you stand in need. Thanks, God. Be it out of you. Carolyn, that they might continue to be a source of strength and a source of encouragement and comfort to her. Bless us on the king, Father. You be with us, Father, all of us. In all the things we stand in need of, help us. Bless us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, thank you, Harry, for that message this morning. This morning, I'm very much going to buy a picture of the first day of the week as it should give up in prosper. I'm very much. Uh, I'm so uh, 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 uh,
been a great day, amen? I'm so thankful always for God allowing us to come together to assemble to worship in the spirit of truth and always encouraged by our glorified God who worship according to scripture. We are encouraged and we're edified as the Bible believers as we come together and as we provoke one another to do it for the cause of Christ. We're so thankful for the number of people that we have today. I wish you all to see what I see is a beautiful crowd. Our numbers increasing each week. And we're thankful for that. And we're always glad to see those who we haven't seen in a while. And for those who are tuning in with us via Zoom, Facebook, we're thankful for you. We, we, we hope that you continue to tune in with us. And if and just know that we are taking uh, every uh, step that we can to continue to practice social distancing as far as the distancing of chairs and picking up a communion and dropping off with the offering in the back so there would be minimal um, assets you know, touching and exposure to one another. And, and if you, and as I said before, if you are still weary and concerned about coming to the closest someone in contact, we respect that and we won't hold that against you. And so this is all uh, that we thankful and praying that God will continue uh, to just bless us so far um, through all that we've been through, all that we all have experienced one way or the other because of the COVID. COVID pandemic, we God the blessings of that, that, that so no one has has been exposed to COVID or, or come down with COVID as a result of us coming together here. So we're thankful for that. So we we'll continue to pray that God will keep his shelter over us and keep us protected. I want to encourage you to if you are visiting with us. Do not share with the tradition either here today or via the internet. We hope that you will extend any questions that you might have to us about our conviction, about our worship, what we believe. God will be to us to be ready to give an answer to those who ask for the hope that is in us. So we want you to. Have a final answer to the Bible question. So let's continue to encourage the love of us to tune in and to come to worship with us as we continue to do the work of God. Um, remember those who, those families who ask for prayers, and those who are in the region and are uh, mindful of the Christian brother, sister, elder, family. Brother Will, most of y'all know him, and we saw Will grow up there at church and grow up and could be a fine young man. He passed away this week in Nashville, and he was living in Nashville and was doing well. And uh, his mother uh, visited us on several, several occasions. And, uh, always a beautiful spirit, and uh, so. We will, will I, I, I ask for her address and her number. So I'll pass it on to those who want to reach out to her and encourage her. And the family as well as the elders. That family is going to be Their loss is not easy. None of those who have lost loved ones that we've been praying for continue to encourage all. You know, time goes by and sometimes. Uh, the, the calls and the visits um, have, have, uh, have decreased, and, uh, and, but they still need to be encouraged. So we've always done a great job in encouraging them, and we we'll just continue to do so. I have a note here from um, the Ladies' Ministry Announcement, who says, Our recipe for peace Bible study is complete. We will come together again around the beginning of next year. Send your book ideas for the voting, the voting poll on our ladies' ministry group. 
Due to family sale or today in person, please check our latest ministry group periodical for details. We will also keep you updated on Sundays. We're doing everything that we can to put the saints and to encourage each other in special times like this. And this is a great effort, especially for our ladies. You know, we know sometimes, a lot of times, the women who are, in most cases, most faithful members of the congregation um, don't get the credit and the, the support and the honor that you should. And this is just something to encourage you, to put you, to um, continue to encourage you to go on for the, for the final parts. Amen. And remember, I met you in Bible study. Um, Wednesday nights, except one of the latest plans for being on Tuesday night when we uh, resume with it. And the then the big about uh, study are, is on Wednesday nights at seven o'clock. We are always encouraged, uh, you know, when you come on, you know, you get to see who all is participating. Sometimes you may put me on the spot and uh, just say thanks to have you on there. Because we want you to know that we're encouraged by the deal. We hope that you are encouraged by our study. So um, you get that opportunity, please join us by the Bible study. Also, uh, as you know, um, we are upon that time of the year um, where um, this country um, uh, uh, celebrates Christmas. And, and, and of course, we don't celebrate Christmas as Christ's birthday. We know it. But it is a time of giving, a time of remembrance and blessing others. And so we uh, we will continue uh, with our annual book, book chase tip of more. You have the information that's on the website. Um, the Baron Heights transition, means transitional home. This is the veterans who are homeless. We have developed a relationship with them in the last couple of years. Um, last last uh, Christmas holiday season, we didn't do anything because of the pandemic, but we uh, are again reaching out to them. We're going to provide them with some gifts and with some desserts. And, uh, and just in time of encouragement for them on December 23rd, Thursday, December 23rd at 6 o'clock. And it, and it will actually be at the Homewood Suites in 5812 Poplar. It's right there at Poplar and the other states. They are staying there at the Homewood Suites during this pandemic. They are, you know, their office and their shelter down on the farm. We have gone down there a couple of times for some events. But we will gather there. We'll sing a couple of songs, give them a word of encouragement. And, 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 I was, and so it would be an opportunity for, for you to, we're asking that you would donate, um, that you would donate funds uh, to help uh, this situation. And also, um, we, those who would like to uh, do desserts, we do not actually do a whole lot. Just if you would like to do a dessert, if you would, we, we would ask that you will um, send up Sister Therese, um, Sister Therese. Okay. Well, Sister Patrice Duncan, if you will let her know today, if you will be interested in, um, in, in supplying and reserve, we will be much grateful for it. And, and I will uh, we'll post Patrice's number also um, on our group text. So if you don't let her know today and through the week, you decide you want to, you can call her and let her know just so that we'll, we'll have some idea. Of what desserts uh, we will have, and then we'll just give the, the men the opportunity, as well as the staff, that would be the opportunity to pick you know, a couple of desserts. Amen. I don't think there's any other announcements. Please continue to, to keep praying for our efforts with our, our erecting the building, uh, and, uh, and God will have blessed us. And for those who haven't seen, we got a picture in back. You can look at it on another one on the website that you can go through and look at. And, and, and God will bless us to, to, uh, to break ground, hopefully, sooner than later. And, uh, and we will be done for it. And if there's no other answers, we will stand and have to close us on the call.
Yeah. 